Hey, hi all. Welcome to my channel, DevOps Mela. So this is a part one of Sonar Queue integration with Azure DevOps. So in this, we'll launch an EC2 instance and we'll install Docker container. Okay. Let's go back. So this is the page aws.amazon.com. So you guys can sign into sign into the console. So hopefully you have already created a login credential for yourself. If not, uh, please create it. Let me put this capture. This is very weird looking. Hopefully this should work very good. Okay, so we'll go in EC2 instance. We'll have to launch an EC2 instance. So I'll be directly, uh, directly launching an EC2 instance and if you guys are new to this and if you want a tutorial video how to launch and what, what other things we can do with AWS, do let me know in the comment box, okay? I'll just directly jump into the AWS marketplace. I'll be looking for CentOS. CentOS 7, this is the preferred. Uh, this is the machine which I will be working on. Just come down to continue. Not explaining all this right now, but if you guys need any help or any understanding on those, what exactly those are, let me know. Okay, I'll be creating T2 medium. Okay, I'm not going with the free tier because I will be launching Docker, I'll be launching SonarQ, I'll be launching many things. So T2 T2 micro free would be very small. Okay. I'll keeping I'll keep everything as default like whatever default option is there I'll keep everything same storage 8 GB is more than enough that is totally fine for me name tag I'll just name it as sonar Q security uh, so this is the default security SSH it's allowed to every uh, anywhere on, on all the IPs, but only this will not work. We'll need one more security to be added. We'll add the all traffic. So all traffic will select anywhere and we'll just save it. We'll do a review and launch. For now, already I already have this existing group where I have a similar setup, nothing, nothing else. So I have a similar setup in existing group. So it's all traffic allowed to any source. We'll just do a review and launch. So your inst instant configuration is not eligible for free tier. I'm aware of, of, of that. So I'm good, good to go. Let's launch that. Okay. So if you're using AWS for the very first time, you need to create a key pair. So I already have it. How to create? Just click on create a new key pair. Give it a name, test key pair. Download the key pair and it will get saved on your local system. Okay, so I'll choose my existing DevOps key pair. Okay, so when you when you download the key pair, there's a dot pem file which gets downloaded on your local system. Let's go and download. So this is the file which gets located uh, downloaded. But in order to access your instance, you would need a .ppk file. So if you guys want to know how to create a .ppk file, so quickly, you can just uh, run putty. You would need putty gen for that. Click on putty gen. Load your dot pem file over here let's go in downloads look for all files devops dot pem just load your file click ok and click on save private file so when you're saving a private file 
it will uh, save it as .ppk. Okay, so you can just name it. .ppk file uh, will be required in order to access this running instance on your local system. Okay, without that you cannot access. At least on Windows. Uh, on uh, Linux, if you're using a Linux or Mac OS, so .ppk is not required. But on Windows, if you want to access this running instance, .ppk would be needed. So that's way. Uh, that is the way we can access this instance. So my system is up and running. If you see, it's a SonarQ server. It's T2 medium. It's running. This is my public IP. I just copy this public IP and I'll open. Put T in order to get this connected. Firstly, I'll just put CentOS. It's a CentOS machine. The username would be CentOS at followed by the public IP. So I'm just rushing through this complete AWS step because my end goal is to help show you how to integrate SonarQ and Azure DevOps. But if you guys need any help on AWS, please put it in the comment box. Okay, I'll select my DevOps PPK file over here. I went in auth, SSH auth. Now I'll just click open. Click yes. So here we go guys. So we are in a CentOS machine right now. AWS console. So it's successfully we have set up a CentOS machine. Here we go. So I'll just do a sudo su. I'll switch to a root user. If you want to check who am I. So I'm a root user. So what is my next step? So we are done with the first step. Uh, launching AWS login and launch EC2 instance then we'll just set up a we'll install docker container and set up docker okay so we have a step I have a predefined steps for installing docker I'll be sharing this in the comment box if you guys want to refer the first step is about to check update so it's a new instance we have to update it if there's any update pending or something like that we'll run a check update first Okay, everything looks good. There are a few dependencies which is needed before we even go and install Docker. So those are yum utils, de device mapper, persistence, data, and LVM2. This is required by Docker. So we'll just install that first. Hyphen Y stands for yes. So whenever you run any, any installation on CentOS, it will prompt you whether you want to install it or not. And if you're defining hyphen Y, so you're giving a go ahead that go ahead and install it. This this step yum config manager. We are adding rocker uh, docker repo in as a local rep, in in my local repository on my server. So whenever then after we'll start if we need anything for like if you want to upgrade or install docker directly we can use yum. That's why I'm just adding as a lo local repository on my system on a server so if you see yum config manager this is a command what we are doing we are adding a repo this is the docker repo link and it got added in etc yum dot repos d docker hyphen c dot repo file okay now if you want to install docker so simply we can do in, in yum install docker so it will get you the latest docker see i have not given the flag why that's why it's prompting me whether you want to install it or not so it's an interactive way of installing a software on linux system so it's a, a centos flavor which we are using right now the same command will work on uh, red hat 2 if you are using a red hat machine and but if you are using ubuntu or some other flavor then on ubuntu you have to use a apt apt okay so we have docker installed right now in order to check whether it is installed or not and if it's running or not so docker d is the daemon which runs in the back end so we just check if that daemon is working or not so system ctl status docker it's loaded but it's inactive but in order to activate it we can just change this to start okay now let's check the status again it's active so my docker is up and running let's see the docker version now 
incorrect command. Okay, so the Docker 1.13 is up and running. Let me see if I have any Docker container running. Nothing. So it's plain. So my Docker has started and it's up and running. I have all the steps mentioned over here. Okay, this last step, if you want Docker to even run when, when the system reboots or something like that, so you can just do a system CTL enabled Docker. Okay. So we'll we'll stop it over here. This is this is purely a Docker installation video. We'll come back and in the next video we'll set up a sonar queue in a Docker container and we'll access sonar queue dashboard and we'll check we'll configure Azure DevOps repository on top of it. Okay, thank you. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.